In the latest episode of the never-ending soap opera between the Liberals and the NDP, Jagmeet Singh blasted Trudeau over his government handing out millions in subsidies to wealthy corporations. The verbal smackdown came after revelations that companies like Loblaw and Costco got up to $26 million courtesy of Canadian taxpayers. Singh tried his hardest, but Polyev cut the circus off at the last second to reveal Jagmeet's conflict of interest with his brother lobbying for another wealthy corporation. Trudeau seized the opportunity to attack Polyev's character, but he was immediately shut down with simple common sense. Parliament is back in session, and you can already see the smoke flying from the hill. Welcome back to Street Politics Canada. Before we jump into today's video, take a second to sign up for our exclusive uncensored newsletter. The mainstream media won't report Trudeau's scandals and corruption, but our newsletter delivers the raw truth to your inbox daily. We'll leave you the link in the description box. Now let's dive into today's crazy developments. What is a coalition but a strong union between two or more political parties that believe in each other's overall message but disagree on the finer things and the road to take to reach the end goal? Well, Jagmeet Singh's NDP and the Trudeau Liberals would have you fooled as they squabble like two divorced parents, once again to further prove the point of everyone acting for their own personal benefit alone at the end of the day. Only thing different this time is Polyev being present to slam both Trudeau and Jagmeet Singh away with their crooked ways and policies. Like an early Christmas present, Canadians wish this was more of a regular occurrence between the three political head figures. Every story starts with a spark, but this one right here somehow starts the whole house fire as NDP leader Jagmeet Singh unleashed a scathing attack on Justin Trudeau and the Liberal government. Why you may ask, because Trudeau was caught red-handed, like the fool he is, handing out nearly $26 million in taxpayer money to profitable market corporations like Loblaw and Costco. Yeah, you heard it right, Trudeau once again spent millions of Canadians' tax money that they worked their backs off to pay just for the cash to land in the hands of wealthy and already profitable corporations. And then Trudeau has the nerve to call out Polyev for opposing something as disastrous as the capital gains tax because he is tangled with wealthy people. Karma always gets Trudeau back for all his egregious misshapes. And if you want to be pissed off even more, then know that this dumbfounding payment came straight from the Trudeau government's low-carbon economy fund. So not only is he paying wealthy corporations, Trudeau is actually funding them under the guise of a green agenda. This is what your taxpayer money goes to, by the way. You pay the corrupt carbon tax and it goes straight into the pockets of the wealthy and the elite. And for what? To hopefully support the grocery chains by new environment-conscious fridges? It is a scam all the way down. The caveat of the whole ordeal with the funding is that Trudeau fell into his classic liberal habits of promising a large sum of money and then somehow doubling it at the end of the deal. Trudeau promised chains like Loblaw and Costco an amount of money that is in the tune of $10 to $15 million, but then he ended up giving them an extra $10 million for no statistical or apparent reason. I guess he is really driven to trademark the act of wasteful spending, because I can't remember a single Canadian leader that was this bad with money but somehow still prideful in the failing economy he governs. Even Trudeau's father wasn't as bad. So of course, with all of these details and the fact that Jagmeet Singh has had a lifelong rivalry with supermarket chains like Loblaws and Costco as he blamed them for the affordability crisis, that his little friend Trudeau started by the way, based on no facts or evidence whatsoever, it is no wonder that Jagmeet felt betrayed by Trudeau's funding. Singh slammed the subsidies as an insult to struggling Canadians who are facing skyrocketing costs at the grocery checkout. He accused the Liberals of being oblivious to the real economic pain people are experiencing across the country. The corrupt NDP leader zeroed in on the Prime Minister, lasting his government's fiscal mismanagement and lack of accountability. He argued the subsidies to wealthy corporations showed how disconnected Trudeau is from the everyday struggles of working Canadians. Funny how the insults once hurled at Polyev by Trudeau are spinning back to hit him straight in the face. Obviously, though, that wasn't enough for the whiny Jagmeet Singh as he took the now common NDP liberal spat to the House of Commons to call out Trudeau right in his face. And Trudeau took that lambasting and played his liberal speak game where he touted the achievements the liberals haven't done yet or are about to do with no results. But of course he couldn't help himself but act as snarky as humanly possible by suggesting that the liberals are working to enact policies that will favor the NDP's position on the supermarket chains, but only if the NDP can support them in the House of Commons and vote on it. Canadians are struggling to put food on the table, and what are the Liberals doing? Where well, they're giving $25 million to Costco and Loblaws. And what are the Conservatives doing? Well, the Conservatives, their leaders, too busy whining and dining, corporate lobbyists, and private yep. dinner clubs. New Democrats have a clear plan. We need to tax. 
tackle corporate greed. We need to make sure we bring down the prices and stop giving millions of dollars to corporate grocery stores. When will the Liberals, when will the Prime Minister stop giving Big Grocery a free ride? Here, here, here. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, not only are we continuing to move forward on our grocery <laughs> code of conduct, but we're working on our, our uh, project to make food more affordable through competition reforms. And now we're creating a national school food program, which is expected to provide meals for more than 400,000 kids a year and save the average family with two children as much as $800 per year on grocery costs. We're also ensuring the wealthiest pay their fair share. And indeed, Mr. Mr. Speaker, there are measures in the House right now that will crack down on predatory pricing, and the NDP has the opportunity to support us as it goes through this House. Here, here. The Honourable Member for Burnaby South. To have the courage to take on corporate greed, which is driving up the cost of food, but we do. Having been completely fed up with this NDP Liberal clown show that is taking place in the House of Commons, Conservative leader Pierre Polyev took the chance to lambast both Jubmeet Singh and Trudeau for their corruption and incompetence. Polyev first called out Jubmeet Singh for his sudden shift in attitude towards Trudeau's funding of the supermarket chains, since there is no way this money would have been spent without the NDP Liberal Coalition signing off on it. I guess Jubmeet is as forgetful as he is corrupt. I mean, he seemed to have forgotten about his brother's nature of work as well and needed a wake-up call from the conservative leader himself. Polyev highlighted how Jubmeet Singh's brother is a lobbyist for another supermarket chain by the name of Metro, which Jubmeet never brings up in his affordability rants for some reason. A conflict of interest as clear as crystal. You think Jubmeet's brother is influencing the corrupt NDP leader to target certain corporations? You think maybe that his uppity behavior attacking money that he probably signed off on is political theater? These are the questions Polyev thought are more important to answer. However, Trudeau has another thing to say about the matter, as he springs up and garbles his words and sipping to admit that the lobbying is actually hurting the NDP, before correcting himself and quickly veering towards political posturing and accusing Polyev once again of being in bed with the wealthy because he doesn't want to support the costly capital gains tax. Spokesman and brother whose company is a lobbyist for Metro. Would the Prime Minister support an investigation into whether or not the NDP leader's spokesman and brother has been unduly influencing the leader of the NDP? The Right Honourable Prime Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, we can see very clearly that all the stories out about the lobbyists' connections with the Leader of the Opposition are actually hurting the, the uh, Leader of the Opposition, which is why he's asking those questions of the NDP. But he has an opportunity right now, Mr. Speaker, to make it clear that he stands with Canadians and stands uh, to ask the wealthiest to pay a little more by announcing now that he will support our measure on increasing the capital gains uh, imposition on Canadians, asking the wealthiest to pay a little bit more. He has dodged that question since the budget came out. Does he support the increase on the capital gains inclusion rate? Polly ever torts back and highlights how Trudeau doesn't even support his own costly policies since he couldn't even bother to include it in the already failing budget. Funny how that works, huh? Trudeau would rather invest more in taxes that actually affect affordability and people's well-being like the nonsensical carbon tax. And just like clockwork, Trudeau goes back to his playbook of accusing Polyev of straight-up fantasies. Honorable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, I do support the Prime Minister paying more tax on the trust fund where he sheltered all of his money. Absolutely. He doesn't, unfortunately, support his own policies. That's why he won't put them into a budget bill. But one tax he is increasing is the carbon tax on food. He's doing it with the help of the NDP. We already have the second highest carbon tax in the entire developed world, and yet if the NDP Liberal government is re-elected, they plan to quadruple that tax to 61 cents a litre on the farmers and truckers who bring us our food. How will Canadians afford to eat, heat and house themselves? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Once again, Canadians saw that he avoided pronouncing on whether or not he supports yep. our increase to the capital gains inclusions rate. Uh, but in regards 
to his deflection onto carbon pricing. Carbon pricing works. We are on track to meet our emissions for the first time in any government in Canadian history. And Canadians get more money back in their pockets thanks to the Canada carbon rebate. And families are already using that rebate uh, to help pay their bills and plan their monthly budgets. Meanwhile, the Conservative leader continues to oppose every measure we put forward for both affordability and fighting climate change. This goes back and forth for a while until Polyev delivers the kill shot regarding Trudeau shrinking the middle class and making life more of a hellscape for every hardworking Canadian, while Trudeau lies through his teeth about the non-existent liberal accomplishments. Leader of the opposition. Mr. Speaker, this Prime Minister, just like his carbon tax, is not worth the cost. The tax is already up to 17 cents a litre, higher than he promised uh, it would go. And he plans to quadruple it further to 61 cents a litre. This after it is a proven environmental failure. Canada ranks 62nd out of 67 countries when it comes to fighting climate change. And this is precisely because what he has is a tax plan and not an environmental plan. Will he stop? Why, why, why won't he adopt our common sense plan for technology and not taxes? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, if the Leader of the Opposition wants to present an actual plan to fight climate change, we'd love to see it, but he has refused to take any, any measure to fight climate change, period. He even doesn't recognize that pollution has a cost which is will only keep rising if we don't fight climate change, with extreme weather events and health impacts increasingly impacting on Canadians. Indeed, the Conservative leader thinks it should be free to pollute and that we shouldn't be giving more money to Canadians through the Canadian Canada carbon rebate. We will continue to have an effective plan to fight climate change that is reducing emissions and putting more money back in Canadians' pockets with the CCR. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, that since the Prime Minister introduced his carbon tax on the farmers who grow the food and the truckers who ship the food, it has raised the price on all who buy the food, with a record-smashing 2 million visits to food banks every single year. 50% of Canadians buying food past best before dates. 20% of them have gotten sick as a result of it. The Prime Minister promised that he was going to help the middle class and those working hard to join it. Now, the so-called middle class can't afford food and homes. Is that what he meant by help? Yeah. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Speaker, according to the Parliamentary Budget Officer, 8 out of 10 Canadians, uh, middle income and lower income Canadians primarily, do better with the Canada carbon rebate that lands in their bank accounts four times a year uh, because of the price of pollu on pollution. But if the Leader Opposite actually cared about affordability and supporting vulnerable Canadians, he'd be standing up to support our measure on dental care, which has now delivered dental care to 30,000 vulnerable seniors across this country already in just a few weeks. Uh, he would be supporting our initiatives uh, to help families. He'd be uh, supporting our initiatives to help with child care. Canadians are tired of the endless squabbles and broken promises from the two old line parties. What we need is a new approach focused on practical solutions to put more money back into the pockets of families struggling to get by. And it just so happens that the Conservatives offered just that. Well, that's all for now. What do you think of Polyev's revelations and statements towards Trudeau and Jamid Singh? Let us know what you think in the comments below. And if you haven't, please subscribe and leave a like for this video. Your support helps us continue our work. You can also follow us on Twitter, where we post stuff we can't post on YouTube. You can find the link in the description below. Thanks again for your support, and I will see you in the next one.